All right, back from break. Time to kick off the next one. This one's CephFS and Hadoop support. Noah, you've been gracious enough to stay awake for us. Uh, so if you want to give us a rundown, what's going on? Sure. Um, so, yeah, so we've had Hadoop support for, well, in some form for a long time. Um, and now there's sort of some people using it and it's picking up picking up some steam. Um, so I thought I'd just uh, tell you kind of like what's where the current status of things are and um, I have a few questions and uh, then tell you what we're up to next. <clears throat> so there was a big problem when we originally started, which was we weren't really sure what the semantics of uh, HDFS were. Uh, so it was kind of hard to, to adapt uh, to hook stuff on top of it. It was kind of trial and error. But there has been a effort by a bunch of people uh, to sort of def like precisely define what the semantics of HDFS are. Well, well, what Hadoop file system is. But um, and there's a bunch of documents here I have links to, um, and these are pretty pretty awesome actually. Um, they are extremely detailed um, and super helpful, but I have not internalized them all yet. So uh, we're sort of working through some problems. As part of this uh, definition of the semantics of their interface, there's a big test suite. And you can see here, I put up uh, sort of results of where we're at right now. Um, there's uh, 60 some tests and we're failing a few, skipping a few. Um, uh, there's some errors in the test suite itself, which we've reported. Um, and those are kind of being fixed. Um, there's some APIs that are kind of not used by a lot of people. Um, HDFS supports file concatenation, which is kind of interesting. You can take a bunch of little files and efficiently stitch them together. Um, so we have, we're going to put a hack in for this so we can just say we support it, but, um, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone's interested in actually having an efficient mechanism for that. I don't think very Is many. That, you're going to implement that, that client size side or on the MDS, the, the hack? Uh, yeah, we'll just implement it in the client for now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would be cool to, to see how that might work, um, like native support for that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of interesting optimizations, but. I, um, yeah, we need to add indirection. Uh, we, we need to have like local disk inodes and things, and that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, and I, yeah, rewriting it so that is probably the best thing to do, rewriting yeah. all the little files. Yeah. Um, I just reported some bugs today in libsfs um, for some tests that are failing. Um, those should be picked up pretty soon. Um, and then the ones that are that are actually failing are related to renames. Um, and these are just, uh, there's not anything in particular uh, that's difficult here. It's just a matter of kind of getting in uh, and making sure that um, the uh, the wrapper is, is right. Usually it's about, sort of error codes and things like that. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in these documents about the semantics of rename in Hadoop, um, and they're pretty complicated. Uh, but they do point out that like just the core uh, rename functionality of the file system, as long as that's atomic, then we can feel free to um, emulate their semantics. So I guess, I mean, I haven't really paid attention to like what Stuff guarantees. I'm guessing that renames atomic Crinsef, but thought I'd ask. Yeah, I mean, I rem we had a couple of bugs in the last several years over. Man, there are some weird edge cases in the POSIX specification around rename, and we had to fix some of them because they weren't quite right. But as far as I'm yeah. aware, we're yeah. POSIX yeah. compliant, so I don't know if yeah, H it's, it's maybe HDFS is POSIX, not. Yeah. <laughs> They they might have like defined their own rename semantics that we don't comply with because they want it to be different. But so when when I first implemented rename, um, I was implementing what I saw from the MV command, and it was only later that I realized that it was doing all kinds of stupid stuff that was not the actual POSIX rename. And so I implemented this weird, crazy things like if you rename any specified directory, it creates the file inside the directory and all that stuff. <laughs> But it turns out that the core POSIX rename is really simple. It's only a only a, a file can override a file, and a directory can override a directory that is empty. 
and beyond that, it's that's sort of what you expect. And, and okay, then it sounds like yeah, we probably are good to go. Yeah. Um, but we haven't seen any problems, and these failed tests aren't are definitely not related to the atomicity of like rename within the MDS. These are this is just silly semantics that are wrong uh, in the wrapper. Um, okay, so uh, I would say you know. These are we're going to be running without any failures on the their the Hadoop test suite pretty soon, which will be cool. Um, uh, there was some mention uh, recently about fixing up the integration tests. Um, there's this thing called Big Top, which is a big set of of um, tests, um, and I think Sage had mentioned um, something about doing this in Toothology. Um, I know Big Top works with Jenkins. I don't know where, like, what kind of support we have for that kind of thing, or if it if it even makes sense to explore that. Yeah, I mean, the, the basic goal is to have as many tests as we can run in Tithology mm -hmm. as part of our nightly test suite. Um, mostly, mm -hmm. all that means is that we have a, a Tithology task that installs Hadoop and starts it up on top of Ceph, and there would be an additional another Tithology task that would install BigTop and run it against the Hadoop that was previously installed just then, um, and just then confirm that the, it was a passing. The okay, so passes. scripted, so it's kind of like with Tithology uh, scripted up and then just kind of forget about Jenkins or whatever. Yeah, kind of yeah I mean, the, okay. there's gonna be a whole tool chain that triggers the Tithology task someday, but but just making the test work itself is the key thing here. Cool, gotcha. Um, all right, that sounds good. Yeah, that's supposedly very easy, according to the guys I talked to who wrote Big Top. So we will get that up and running pretty soon. Um, I was looking through the tracker tickets. I came across the clock sync stuff. I haven't seen any errors or heard of any problems related to this, so I don't know what the state of it is. Um, uh, Greg's smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's resolved now. Um, I don't actually remember if it was for the giant release or if it's going to be. I think I think it's in giant that um, we basically use the client times for everything. Okay. Uh, they're encoded on all of the. Uh, yeah, the client sends along a a timestamp to use as the as the now time for uh -huh. basically everything it does to the MDS. Um, so if your clients aren't synced, then your times are going to be weird, but. They were going to be weird anyway, yeah. so now it's just we use client timestamps for for all updates. And so our recollection is that this particular issue was that like the client like the oh HDFS um, uses the, uses the the name node for everything, and so or for all for all timestamps, right? And so it had a single unified clock source, and we were changing clocks at a time when it didn't expect. But now the client is assigning them, and it should be preserved, so this should be all good. Yeah, I think that at least the times that I had seen it, we just had bad clock sync. But yeah. the but it was like the the clocks were out of sync by you know like a half a second or something, and that was like a below the granularity that like it was chopping off or whatever. So yeah. it sounds like we still need clock sync. <laughs> well, no, I mean because because right the. Uh, what I, just I was going off of my, my memory from a long time ago was that um these are like m times were being changed by changed after the after the writing client had read them and so the reading clients were like the m time isn't what I expected to be I have to I, I'm something's wrong. Oh, right. you're yeah you're you're totally right. It was way more complicated than I had it in my head. Yeah, it was like a really yeah. weird thing going. Yeah. On. So no, so th sense. those m time stamps are not are not going to be changed behind the scenes anymore. Unless we missed Perfect. something, and I don't think we did. So, okay, cool. So yeah, that should be good. That's awesome. I just marked it resolved. <laughs> oh, okay. Perfect. Um, yeah, that was like a okay. five-year-old bug or something. Um. So I don't know. Um. Uh, other stuff, snapshots and quotas. It sounds like you guys were talking about that stuff in the previous sessions, and maybe in the next session. Um. That stuff's all supported. Um, there's guides here that sort of describe the 
notions of snapshots and quotas in, in HDFS. Maybe interesting to, to see, like, just in terms of, like, influencing anything, but um, this isn't anything critical. Do you know sort of how the snapshots, just a sense of how the snapshots work? Or what I, they expect I out don't. of that? Okay. I don't at all. I think it's like you can take a snapshot of a directory and then get back a path to the snapshot, but I didn't read through the guide. Okay. Uh, completely. I was just looking at but the The API. quotas appear to be directory based, so that should be the thing that is at our next session. Um, yeah. They had an interesting Those notion of map, but... quotas on names in addition to space, which I thought was interesting. Um, so you can cap oh, like the number of directories and files. Okay. Um, I don't know why they do that. Maybe because they want to keep the metadata server. That's they probably want why denial of service or something. Yeah, it's, um, it's not too uncommon, I think, too, to have like file <clears throat> file count yeah. quotas and not just like. Yeah, I mean, they're inodes, and a okay. lot of systems have limited inodes or whatever. So not as much anymore, but that used to be a big thing. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, and your favorite topic, client shutdown. Um, I wrote up a bunch of this stuff. We solved a bunch of problems um, that performance guys were seeing, um, and in the process sort of got a really good description of like all the different scenarios that we were seeing problems with. So the basic issue here is that um, if clients, uh, if processes crash, um, then other clients in the system start to see delays. Like they might, they might block on LS for a long time. Um, and presumably this is because they have caps and then there's timeouts that have to expire. So um, we see this, or we were seeing this a lot. and um, there's a couple scenarios. The first scenario is that just is is uh, it's pretty clear processes just don't exit cleanly. We there's actually only been one instance of this, um, and I've reported that to as a bug, and I think it, it's pretty easy fix. I think they'll they'll take care of it. But the harder one to fix is um, related to the way that Hadoop and uh, Yarn in particular, which is responsible for managing all the resources in the system, how it cleans the stuff up. Um, so the the specific scenario that we saw uh, this become a problem was after a Hadoop job finished, um, all the map tasks broadcast back that they were complete. And and after this occurs, Yarn sends sig term to all the all the processes that are running a, a libcfs client, and then it gives it a quarter of a second, and then it sends sig kill. So the what we had observed though was that we saw like 100% like the thing completed, and then everything just hung for like 30 seconds. And the problem was that 250 milliseconds just wasn't long enough for libcfs to unmount. Um, so what we did was we just increased that that threshold. So I think we put it at like 30 seconds or something. Um, and then everything works fine. So it's really smooth shutdown. Um, there's an interesting sort of thing is that there's, it still doesn't let them exit um, completely. So there's a point in the unmount process where everything is, is, is cleaned up, but we're not done with unmount completely. So we're still killing them as soon as um, some sort of monitoring process that might be just like doing an ls on these files or something returns. Um, so it's you know it's not satisfying if we really if we need like, but you get you get through it. I mean the problem is gone in terms of performance, but we're still not cleanly unmounting um, for whatever whatever that means. Like we're not finishing the function call. So. Um, I don't know how often that is going to be a problem. So Sorry, ideally, so what's... Um, anything that is SIG killing a file system client would also evict it explicitly from CephFS. Um, um, I don't know if there is a, a hook in Yarn that was, would let us do that. Yeah, I think, I think there, I mean, I think that there are, 
um, opportunities to enhance like the communication between yarn and these processes that are running the clients. Um, you know, at this point it's, there's, this is how it is. You get SIG term and then there's a delay and then SIG kill. So, so I'm confused what we're, we're, these are the map tasks that are running. So it's like the data has been like, like the map task writes it and doesn't do a flush. And then it says, Hey, I'm done. And then is no, that so the, um, no, so the, uh, so the map tasks are completely done, but they're still sitting there idle. They're just processes running. And then but I mean, they must, like they have some dirty data or something, right? That must be why it's taking so long for stuff to shut down. Not, not from what I can tell, from what I can tell that there is no dirty data. Um, and I can definitely get you. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, log might be helpful because yeah, it, it seems just, like it should go quick, quickly. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yes, I can get you logs, definitely. Um, the, you know, in the HCFS uh, semantic descriptions, they don't include, they're very clear about what it means to close a file and flush a file, but they don't have any notion of what it means to unmount. And I had some out-of-band conversation with the HCFS person, and they were saying that uh, that quarter second shutdown is tuned for HDFS. Like it, it never takes more than that yeah. amount of time for HDFS to unmount, uh, for the client to unmount. So we should be seeing the same sequence of operations. So I don't, I mean, there might be dirty data, but I don't think so. Um, yeah. it shouldn't be. Um, but I can produce a trace. Um, I guess you'd want, yeah, I can just produce um, traces and then find whichever one was like taking the longest or something to unmount. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. So that's sort of like what's going on with the processes that are going through what you might call like the normal sort of like sequence of events. Um, but then SIG kill is also used by yarn to just um, destroy processes that are acting terrible. Um, and um, there's a bunch of different, uh, I don't, I mean, it doesn't really matter why yarn is killing these things. Um, but as an example, I, you know, I saw, I saw one map task that was um, stuck in F-Sync because of laggy OSDs. Um, and I determined that just, I was keeping logs. So in the logs, it was reporting the laggy OSDs and it was just sitting there waiting. Um, and then Hadoop came along and killed that process. But then there was this cascading effect where these other processes were um, blocking for 30 seconds for these timeouts to occur. Whereas like it was just trying to get rid of this resource. And so I don't know if that's like, it's really unsatisfying. Um, so that 30 seconds thing is, is kind of scary. Um, I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, I'm not sure that the behavior we actually currently have in CephFS is um, legal or safe. Um, get, mm -hmm. Handing out these caps to other clients after 30 seconds. Um, when, you know, if you've got OSDs that are, that are laggy, that original client potentially is sat there and it's going to reissue um, requests to, this, to uh, the same file data objects. No, uh, it, it, it syncs up. Like, like the client is respecting that, that interval as well and is maintaining its caps with mm. the MDS. Mm. Yeah, but is I think it not? If, if, it if the operations data, have already gone into try. the objector, yeah. the objector doesn't know uh, about yes. any interval okay. like yes, that. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yep. Um, so, I, mean, I didn't my, follow that. <laughs> so, so if you have a client that is um, misbehaving, that has uh -huh. started doing some um, Rados IO, and the operations have got as far as the objector on the client side, mm -hmm. um, then assuming that that client has no further communication with the MDS, 
Um, the MDS currently, after 30 seconds, will say, all right, I'm giving up on that client and potentially give the caps on a file to another client who will also mm -hmm. come in and try and do IO to the same radar subjects, except there was this other client who is still who still has some rados operations enqueued to that file and um potentially that's gonna give you a, i don't a know workload. i mean i don't think that any of these workloads should have multiple clients opening the same file basically in hadoop you there's single writer single file yeah. always so uh, yeah this is just a more general issue although actually we yeah. can we can handle that i think because we actually have Op cancellation. <laughs> yeah, or but even right, but you can't in, trust clients yeah. to cancel ops. You um oh. you, you have to once you well, stop trusting a client, you have to blacklist it. You have to fence and it. The IO could have all already reached the OSD. Yeah, so but I mean, if it's reached the OSD, then you're okay. <laughs> it's not a problem with the OS if if it's in the OSD because it's pro it's ordered. Kind of, but yeah, but yeah, it's it's a we could get around it in other ways. I think too. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay. Different topic for a different time. So, so that the yeah the 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 sort of the strictness of the eviction and whether you blacklist clients and things is a separate topic. But the stuff here mm. about do we need to increase timeouts? Um, every, every every time I hear do we need to increase timeouts, you know, my response is no, we don't. We need a a robust yeah. um, mechanism. Yeah. And every time <laughs> every time you sig kill a file system client, you should be doing something to tell the file system that that client's gone away as well. Yeah, that seems like the, the right solution there. Um, <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean? <laughs> that means that, does that, mean that the yarn would be saying, like how does it even identify yeah. these clients? Yeah, so yarn, yarn would have to know the, the ID of the client from Seth's point of view, so that when it sig kills somebody, um, it will also go and, um, well, currently you have to go and talk to the MDS admin socket to evict a session, but at some point mm -hmm. it'd be nice to do that through the mod as well. So now, John, you added all the, one... the metadata stuff. If the, if the file system client identified itself as whatever the identifier is for the, the map worker or whatever that yarn knows it as, then it could be the same thing. So you would say, kill the client for host name. You know, Hadoop worker seven seven three or whatever. Yeah, so you can I guess you you can you can either do that or you can say that it's Jan's responsibility to learn the Ceph IDs of its clients. But <laughs> it's more general to it, it is harder <laughs> and it's also less correct because if you have a client that fails immediately after starting up, Jan might never have had the opportunity to learn its ID. So yeah. um yeah, no, I, I agree. We should we should do that so that Jan can can put in some metadata if it wants. No, why can't I mean? Yarn follows the sig term followed by sig kill protocol pretty strictly. So why couldn't we use sig term to trigger uh, something through libcephfs? Because there's like, no guarantee that you handle anything at all, including signals, um, within any real time limit. <laughs> well, I think that the delivery of sig, I mean. Yeah, I guess like you're talking about something super robust. Um, super robust uh, or yeah. robust, as I call it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just getting these things to clean up a little bit is seems like it's all that's needed. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't this know. Is, this is a broader discussion, so let, yeah, yeah, had a sorry. few more things sure. on on this Hadoop talk. So sure. Sorry. So um, <laughs> so I guess I mean. Uh, right now, um, as long, well, the right now, as long as we don't have tasks blocking on like things like laggy OSDs, we're good. Performance is pretty good now. Um, once we've identified this uh, way to like give the clients time to clean up, but it sounds like you guys are talking about some other scenarios. So, um, uh, anyways. So we're good there. Um, and so like what we're doing now is we've got a big cluster. We're doing profiling and stuff on like that. And um, I've been getting various like performance results back from um, saying like Ceph is 
like twice as slow as HDFS and stuff like this. So we're starting to look at profiling to see like where all this time is being spent. Um, it's not really clear where. Um, it's also not even clear that like when we saw like two X is pretty bad, but um, when we start to whittle that down, that it's not even clear HDFS is like the best baseline for us. Um, so you no, know, I don't know if anyone's written. Do we have any like file system? Do we have any benchmarks for libsfs? I was thinking we could build like an FIO backend for this um, to do some tests. That would be that would be awesome. There's an FIO okay. thing for RBD now, so adding an RBD or a SFS oh, yeah. one would be be nice. Yeah. Um. Cool. Yeah. Because it's not. I'm always like, wow, two X is like terrible, but I don't even know like what the target like because we're kind of like. Yeah. Um, well, it's the, not clear what the performance parity would be. be. I think the <laughs> table stakes, but it yeah, it'd be very interesting to yeah, see yeah. why, what is, what, which parts of it are slow. Yeah, we've solved a few. Some of them were um, uh, crossing the Java J and I boundary like a trillion times or whatever, um, because it was doing like really tiny um, IOs out to libs FFS. And like this, this increased performance dramatically. So it's just like uh, it just takes so much time getting these profiling things out and like checking it out. So yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, I think the state is pretty good of things. Um, it's just kind of which 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 cluster is is are you running it on? Is this the UCSC cluster or is this the Red Hat one or? or um, we had. The Plana, we had a Plana cluster. I'm using Plana oh, for right. okay. for non-performance stuff, um, but then Red Hat has um, uh, a big cluster that they've set it up on. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know what the name cool. of it is. Um, yeah, so I guess my only real to do here is to get some traces for you guys um, from the clients. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, I I remember that one of the ones you sent, like the messaging was not performing, or or was something was very wrong with the messaging layer. Um, that so. was the one where you were like, "Why is it taking a quarter second to send this message, or something like that?" Right? Yeah, it was just like um, you know, system calls were just taking forever. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'm, it would be very interesting, I think, to see the the performance. Some some evidence or something that would let us understand what the, the performance situation is too. Um, for performance in general or for this unmounting? For or, or for in, in general, for like where <laughs> where is the time? Where is the time being? Well, yeah, the unmount thing, but yeah, where the, where the time is being stent, spent? Um, I mean, is it is it when it's doing I/O? Is it when it's like opening files? Is it doing the map yeah. stage? Is it doing yeah when? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not it's not completely clear yet. Um, yeah. So we just finished. I mean, we're pretty happy with the stability now. So I think we should be getting some numbers out pretty soon. But I don't have any numbers for you today. Cool. Um, cool. Yep. I think that's about it. Awesome. Um. I had one question, sort of jumping up back to the beginning. There's there's a big top stuff, obviously, that you mentioned. The but this results where there's 61 passes, three failures, or skipped. Is that also big top, or is that a different set of that's the HCFS test suite? Is that a different? Yeah, those are just unit. Yeah, those are unit tests okay. for okay. for the file system itself. And then big top is like it just runs applications. I think. I see. Okay. Um, Okay, so it's not source it's specific at all. It's just... Well, I mean, and it's it's not even Hadoop only, right? This is their like cross project testing system. Plus, that's the big extensive, uh, I think. like big Got event, it. I think. Got it. Okay. Okay. I I, I could yeah. be misremembering, but that makes no, sense. No, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, okay. it's like um, all sorts of stuff. Cool. All right. Yeah. Project for the development of packaging and tests of the Apache Hadoop ecosystem. Awesome. Oh yeah. Cool. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Noah. Yeah. Sure.